All right, welcome to this lesson. Our lesson today is related to magnetism. And throughout this lesson, we want to, to look at several things. We want to look at magnetic fields. We want to be able to can find what we refer to as what we call um, magnetic flux density. So we have heard about magnets before. And I think by now we have an idea that, that a magnet has two poles. It has a north pole, right? North pole. And we know that it has a south pole. Because magnets have two poles, we generally refer to magnets as being dipole, right? And we know a typical magnet in your childhood days, you must have come across some type of magnet, right? So we're going to consider what we call a bar magnet for, for this, you know, diagram. So one side of that magnet is going to be north, one side is going to be south. Now magnets are very useful. They, they are used in generators to induce charge and all of that we'll soon talk about those things further down right but i want you to get a general overview of a, a general magnet right now when we have magnets there is what we call a magnetic field around the magnet now these magnetic fields are imaginary lines that runs from the north into the south so there are concentric circles. There are circles that move from, or there are lines that move from the north, goes and, 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 and directs themselves into, into the south, the southern part of the magnet. So that's how a magnetic field behaves when we are considering it, right? So it is moving lines outward, magnetic field lines outward, and then now those lines are then going into the south. So what we just drew a while ago were the magnetic field lines um, around a bar magnet. Now there's something spectacular that we'll talk about eventually. But before we, 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 we talk about that, I want to make mention of the fact that um, there are certain materials that can be can 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 be referred to as what we call magnetic materials, right? And if you do chemistry, you probably can come across some of those things. One thing here that we can refer to as being a magnetic material is what we call lodestone. There are other there are other things, but I, I can't I can't explicitly tell you the name of them right now. But there are other things that or other metals or other materials that has magnetic properties, which just means that it is able to attract um, some type of, or it has some type of magnetic field around it. Not all the materials, as we know, um, has a magnetic property, right? But you have some that has varying magnetic properties. Now, How we can know if something is a magnetic material is by taking that material or yeah by taking that ma material and bringing it towards some other type of magnetic material and then now you find out whether or not it has some magnetic property right now in fifth form you would have heard about um, soft irons and and permanent and, 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 and um, yeah, soft iron. So, you know, one of the things that we can do as well, right, we can also magnetize a material, right, meaning that you can take a permanent magnet, right, or a hard magnet, and 
bring it toward a soft, ma soft magnet or soft material, and we could actually induce a magnetic field to it. Well, that's not the entire scope of the lesson, but what I just want you to know is that we can actually magnetize certain materials. All right. Now, another way we can speak about magnetic materials are how, are, are, what, I, what I should say is that um, in just the same way, we can have a magnetic property from certain materials, right? Researchers have come to an understanding, scientists have come to an understanding that whenever current is flowing through a conductor, right? A magnetic field can, or a magnetic field is generated around the wire. Good? And this was done by, if my memory serves me well, um, I think Faraday's was one who investigated it as well. But he was another person. I don't remember his name, right? But Faraday's went ahead and did some work as it relates to this as well. I don't remember the other guy name, right? Is it Oscar? I don't remember his name. But yeah. But the fact of the matter is that one guy took a piece of current wire. So here we have a piece of wire and current is flowing through the wire. By taking a compass, we know a compass is a device that we use to tell directions, north pole and south pole and all of those things, right? He took this compass when the current was flowing through the wire. Then by taking the compass and bringing it closer to the wire, he was able to realize that the compass had a deflection, meaning that when he brought the compass closer, right, he realized that the north pole or the, 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 the compass would have changed direction, right? So with this observation, he was able to realize that once current is flowing through a conductor or through a piece of wire, there is going to be a magnetic field around the wire, right? So there's going to be a magnetic field around the wire, which we're going to talk about in greater depth, all right? Now, one other thing that we must um, be, be aware of is what we call a magnetic flux. Now, with, with any magnetic material, we said that it's going to have a magnetic field. Now, the magnetic flux is just defined as the number of field lines passing through a closed surface. So, if we had... Um, let's take, for example, we had a magnet right here, right? And we have the magnetic field going out like this. Good. And we were to consider a closed loop, meaning that we have, we enclose this section. The magnetic flux is just telling us number of magnetic field lines passing through this enclosed area. All right. That's what the magnetic flux speaks to. How many magnetic field lines are passing through this area? Right? And we'll talk more about magnetic flux um, sooner than later, where you'll realize that magnetic flux right, is equal to the magnetic field multiplied by the area. Okay? So if you want to find the magnetic flux, you then have to take the magnetic field or the magnetic flux density of the, the magnet, which is just talking about the strength of the magnet, and times it by the area through which the magnetic fields are passing through. Now, yeah, we talked about magnetic fields earlier. We just want to put a definition to it. So it, it, it's the region of space in which uh, moving charged particles are subjected to a magnetic force. So it's just that region around a magnet where you really feel a force of attraction or repulsion as well, right? So we know that the further away you go from a magnet, it's the less force you will feel, hence the less magnetic fields that will be in that region. The closer you are to the magnet, it's the more magnetic field lines you will have. 
and, the, and, and hence the more the force might be, whether it be a force of attraction or a force of repulsion. Okay, so as you can imagine, at this location, at A, you would have more magnetic field lines at this point. When you're at this location, location B, you have less magnetic um, field. So it just goes to show and tell us that um, at different locations around a magnet, you will have different amount of magnetic field passing through a given loop or a given area. Mind you, when we talk about magnetic field, we can actually quantify it by saying the magnetic field strength. We can find the magnetic field strength of, of, a, of a magnet. We can find the magnetic field strength um, around a wire and so forth. When here we talk about the strength of a magnetic field, it's the same thing as what we call the magnetic flux density. Good. And that is just defined as the number of field lines um, passing through a region per unit area. Right? So it's the number of field lines passing through a region per unit area. So that, that is pretty much how we um, find our, that, that's a, a definition for our magnetic flux density. It's the number of field lines passing through a region per unit area. Now, with that being said, if we're measuring something, it means that there's going to be a unit associated with it. And the unit to measure magnetic flux density is what we call Tesla. So when you hear about the vehicle Tesla and all of that, right? you can then remember that they're really talking about the unit of magnetic flux density, all right? Where it tells us that one Tesla is equal to one Weber per meter square. Now, Weber is the unit for magnetic, magnetic flux. So magnetic flux, right? Right, magnetic flux. The unit for magnetic flux is what we call Weber. Right. So be aware of these things. Okay. Now, I started out with a diagram showing the magnetic field around a bar magnet. This is how you must and always draw the magnetic field whenever we're talking about a bar magnet. As I would have stated to you that it points outward. The magnetic fields move from out of the north pole into the south pole. Good? So that's how you generally represent the magnetic fields around a bar magnet. Now here we have a current wire. Right? Here we have a wire. Good? And current is flowing through the wire. Now, as I would have stated to you that once current is flowing through the wire, there's going to be a magnetic field. In some cases, you'll hear us talking about a B field. So the B represents magnetic field. Now, we're going to examine how we can predict or yeah, predict the direction of which the magnetic field is moving. So there are certain things that you're going to hear us talk about for these examples here. Now, here's another type of um, current wires that are wrapped around some type of material, right? In this case, we say we have a solenoid. So this is what we call a solenoid, right? And this is also another example of a solenoid. Good. We are going to tell you how you can find out um, which side or where is the magnetic field pointing towards and so forth, all right? Because that is very important. And we do this based on where the current is flowing. So we're going to talk about certain things that you have to pay attention to. Here's another example of um, a current wire. This is when you have a flat coil. So we're going to look at them in, 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 in greater depth, but let's talk about certain things first. Now, this can be a little bit abstract, right, in terms of the concept, but you just have to 
to take it from this standpoint, all right? Now, what if I had a piece of paper like this, right? You know, if you hold a piece of paper horizontally, this is how it looks. So if you grab a piece of paper right now and hold it up in the ear like that, such that the surface ear here is pointing upwards and then now you have another surface ear pointing downwards, good? Now, let's take, for example, that in that paper, I have a, I have a wire that is passing through the, through the, um, through the paper. So the, the, there's a wire passing through the paper like this. Good. Now, mind you, that the current is flowing upwards. Good. Now, I want to predict how my magnetic field is going to, is going to behave around that current wire. In order for me to do this, I must use what I call the right-hand grip rule to predict the magnetic field around a current wire. So what the right-hand grip rule states is that you're going to take your right hand, right? And you're going to grip the wire. So imagine that you have the wire going out like this. You're going to grip the wire with your right hand, just like how you're seeing this diagram here. Now, your, your thumb is going to show you the direction of the current. Direction of current. Remember, we said that the wire, the current was flowing out of the paper. It was flowing out of the paper, right? It was going up like this. So your thumb must be pointing upward. Now, based on that information, you're, you're, you're going to realize that your four fingers are going to curl around the wire. Now, based on where your fingers are curled, or the direction in where your fingers are curled, that now will determine and tell you the direction of the magnetic field. So these four fingers are used to predict, right? Predict the direction of the magnetic field lines around around the wire, around the wire, good? So as I said before that the current is flowing through the wire like this, so you would grip the wire and by gripping the wire, then this is how your magnetic field would look around the wire, right? That's how your magnetic field would look around the wire. You would, you would draw some concentric circles, you would draw some small circles like this, and then you would put some arrows showing the direction of how the magnetic field lines are moving. So that is how your magnetic field lines are moving from this standpoint. This is from a, I would say a three-dimensional uh, can I say three-dimensional? But this is from a, diff a different angle. Now, there is something that you must must be aware of when we're dealing with current flowing through a paper. So let's take, for example, let's look at it from, a, from this standpoint. Let's look at it from this standpoint. Here we have, imagine that this is your paper, right? Let's imagine that this is your paper. And the wire is coming out of the paper. When the wire is coming out of the paper, we use a dot. We use a dot to represent that the current is flowing out of the paper. Good. So, so we use a dot to represent current flowing out of the paper. Good. 
So in this case, it's the same thing. This and this is the same thing. We're just looking at it from a different angle. Right? We're looking at it from a uh, what I call it now a like you you'd have turned the paper. You would turn the paper um you know in front of you almost like you're reading a book, right? So having said that, we can look at it from this angle to say that all right, so my my my, my current is coming out. So by using the right hand grip rule, all you would need to do, and the best way you can do this is to take a paper in front of you and imagine that the current is flowing out of the paper. If the current is flowing out of the paper, you will just take your right hand, right, and put it over the paper, right, and ensure that your thumb is pointing outward, meaning that your thumb is pointing in a direction where where um the the current is flowing out so your thumb is sticking out with that being said you realize that your four fingers would curl around like this so if your three fingers are curling around like this then it tells us that the magnetic field is flowing in this direction Yeah. So as I was saying a while ago that this is for whenever we have a straight current current wire. So once we have a straight current current wire, right, then the right hand grip rule <clears throat> works as such to say that the thumb shows the direction, then the four fingers shows the magnetic field, right? So that, that's, a, that's a thing that we must always remember. Now, we could consider another um, concept or another, we can take it from another viewpoint to say, what if the current was flowing into the paper? If the current is flowing into the paper, then we use an X in the center to represent that the current is flowing into the paper, right? So in this case, if you have a paper in front of you, you can just grab the paper and put your thumb towards the paper. Now your thumb is going to show you the direction of the current. And then obviously your four fingers are going to curl so that the magnetic field is moving like this whenever you have a current wire that is going into the paper. So that is how you would predict it, right? So once you grab your right hand and you put your direct your thumb in or towards the paper, <clears throat> then you would realize that your four fingers are curling in a clockwise position, right? It's curling in a clockwise position just means that it's curling into your palm like this. It's curling into your palm. So that therefore it shows that this is the direction our magnetic field is moving clockwise whereas on the other side here it was it is moving anti-clockwise now there is another scenario that we must consider right in this case in this case we are considering a solenoid so this is a solenoid right and a solenoid is just loops of wires wrapped around right right so you if you wrap around some wire on a piece on a pencil let's take for example you have a pencil and you wrap some wire around it by wrapping the wire around it like this you're creating what we call a solenoid now that Solenoid that we're creating is very important to us, and I'll tell you why it's important to us. But for now, we want to be able to can predict the direction of the magnetic field. Now, when you're when we're dealing with a solenoid, we still use the right hand grip rule. We still use the right hand grip rule. However, when using the right hand grip rule for a solenoid. Whereas your thumb 
for a straight current wire represented the direction of a current. In this case, your thumb is going to represent the direction of the field line. So in this case, your right hand grip rule is telling us that your thumb is going to show you the direction of the magnetic field, whereas your four fingers are going to be used to show you the direction of the current. So mind you, if we look at this example here, here we have some wires wrapped around and we can clearly see from this diagram that my current is flowing like this, right? So each time the wire goes over and come back over, my current is flowing upwards like this. Now, just like how this diagram here is showing, if you wanted to find which end or where my magnetic field is going to be, right? By gripping the solenoid, you realize that your fingers here will show you the direction of the current. So it clearly indicates to us that the current is flowing over like this flowing over like this. It's coming from this end, going all the way over, and when it comes back out on this end, it's coming up like this. So that's how the current is flowing, all the way until it reaches this end, right? So we're saying that your four fingers are going to direct you and show you how the current is flowing. Then automatically, wherever your thumb points, it's going to show you the direction of the magnetic field. And in this case, wherever your thumb points, it is going to show you that this side of the solenoid is going to be the north side, which just tells us that the magnetic field lines are moving outward. Remember we said that once the magnetic field lines are pointing outward, then that is the north pole. Once you have the magnetic field going inward, then that's this south pole. So because your thumb is pointing outward, then it clearly indicates to us and tell us that our, this side of the magnet is definitely going to be the north side of the magnet. Right? Yes. And this is just another view of, of it. So here we have the current coming out. Right? Now, the current coming out of the paper at this end. Good. Now, clearly, because we're using the right hand grip rule, your thumb, your, your, your four fingers must curl over like this, which just shows that that is how your, the, the current is flowing. The current is flowing from this side to that side, from this side to that side. Then automatically, your thumb is going to point this way which just tells you that this side is going to be the north side of the, of the magnet. Now, we talked about a solenoid, right? Which is very important for us. As I, and, 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 and I think I should, have, I should say about the solenoid. A solenoid is, 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 is like a bar magnet because what we realize is that, um, what we realize is that when, when we have a solenoid, you're going to have magnetic field lines moving around like this, coming, up, coming back to the south pole. You're going to have lines going around it like this. So just like what you're seeing here, right? This is now a bar magnet because once you have a distinct north pole and a distinct south pole, you now form a bar magnet using... Um, wires bar magnet but in essence it is just a typical solenoid and there are very there are various applications of these things all right now 
let's shift our attention to this to this thing right here. This is a circular flat coil. So from time to time, you'll hear us talking about circular coils. And a circular coil is just having the wires being compressed on each other like this, right? So it's like you have several wires wrap, wrapping around uh, each other like that. Good. The whole difference between a, a circular coil and a solenoid is that the solenoid is, is extended. So you are seeing the individual wrap of the wire with, with, with the solenoid. We can take a, a circular coil and make it become a solenoid by pulling out the wires. So if you were to pull out the wires like this, right, then you would basically have a solenoid but we're not focused on the solenoid now we're dealing with a circular flat coil when, whenever you have a circular flat coil right we also need to predict the direction of the manic field right how we're going to do that as well is using is by using the the, the, the same right hand right hand grip rule right but how we're going to do it this time is we're going to look at each end where the wire is coming out. So I'll show you what I mean. So at this end, if we were to consider a paper, here we have a paper, right? And we have a wire that is coming out on one end and going into on another end. Remember we said that current, when current is going out of a paper, right? we use a dot. So this shows that the current is coming out of the paper right here. If you use your right hand grip rule that says um, thumb shows the direction of current and the four fingers four fingers shows magnetic field then you can clearly see that if you were to put your hand right here your right hand right here and direct your thumb upward then you will clearly see that your magnetic field lines will be moving round out like this so if you were to map out all of those magnetic fields then you will realize that for this portion of the wire your magnetic field will be going anti-clockwise now that is one side of the magnet let's consider this side of the magnet where the magnetic field is going where the, where the wire, where the current is flowing into the paper. So at this point of the, on, on the paper, you would expect that your current is flowing into the paper. And if you use your right hand grip, grip rule, so take your thumb and point it downward to the paper, and clearly you're going to see that your four fingers, right, are going to curl into your palm right using our go yeah they'll, they'll be curling into your palm using um, a clockwise um manner meaning that they're going to curl around clockwise right so your four fingers right are going to curl into your palm so it therefore shows us that the magnetic field for this side where the wire is going into the paper right will will be going clockwise going clockwise so if we were to look at it imagine that these were the field lines here are the field lines and we're saying that our magnetic field is going around like this right if we were to draw some more field lines then you'd realize that these field lines here clearly shows that once you have magnetic field lines coming out like this then that is going to be the north side of the coil once you have magnetic field lines going into then that is clearly the south side of the of the coil so that is just a way how you can predict which side of the coil is going to be north which side is going to be south right and you have to use the right hand grip rule you have to remember the convention for this one right so we're treating the coil like a piece of wire like a straight wire in this case 
right here we're treating it we're looking at when it is coming out and then now we're looking at when it is going into the paper again good now as it relates to um calculating the magnetic field or what we say the magnetic flux density um around a straight current wire right we we're going to use this equation here that says the magnetic flux density is equal to mu naught times the current flowing through the wire divided by 2 pi r right so that that equation that we are going to use um, in order to to find the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density for when you have a current wire where it's a straight piece of wire where you know the, the, the wire is passing through a piece of paper all of that so obviously i speaks to the current now mu naught is what we call the permeability and it says mu is a measure of a medium's ability to transmit a magnetic field so different mediums has different permeabilities which just tells us how easy will this magnetic field pass through this given medium mind you the permeability of free space is what we call mu naught right and this is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 newtons per amp Weird. good so this is a given value right for the permittivity of free space you generally get these constant values um in on, on the front of your paper right you get these constants what, what mu naught is and so forth so in a given question when you're calculating the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density right then you're using this particular formula and it's for a straight wire so once the wire is straight right and current is flowing through it you can find the magnetic field line or the magnetic um flux density by using this equation so mu naught times i divided by 2 pi r where r is the distance from the wire so some distance from the wire you're going to have r so maybe you want to find the magnetic field at this location, right? So you would then measure the distance from the wire to where you want to measure the magnetic field strength. You follow me? Yeah, so that's that. And as I would have stated to you, once you have a current wire, then magnetic field lines are going to be around it. So you need to draw concentric circles to show the direction, to show how the magnetic field lines are moving around, okay? Now, in just the same way we have an equation to find the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density for a straight current carrying wire, we also have an equation that we can use whenever we're dealing with a circular loop or a flat coil, all right? So if you have something like this, and we want to measure the magnetic field, we use this equation that says B is equal to mu naught times capital N times I divided by 2R. Now it says that R is the radius of the coil. So this is the entire coil, all right? And then now the radius is just that distance from the center to the, the end of the coil right here. So yes, that R speaks to the radius. So in this case, it's the radius that we're talking about. So from the center to the edge of the, the coil. And then obviously the current. Now N speaks to the number of turns, right? So the number of turns is just the number of times the wire has been wrapped around, right? How many, how many turns, how many, how many loops can I count on that, that particular piece of coil all right 
So that's what it means there. Then we move on to talk about the solenoid. We can also find the magnetic flux density for a particular solenoid. When we're finding that, we use an equation that says B is equal to mu naught times N, common N times I, where, where small n speaks to the number of turns per unit length. So remember, capital N speaks the number of turns. And with a solenoid, it's going to have a particular length. So that small n right here is just saying n, small n is equal to number of turns per unit length. This is sometimes called the turn density. It is sometimes referred to as what we call a turn density. So once you know the length of the conductor, of the solenoid, I should say, right? If you know the length of the solenoid and you know the number of turns, then you can find small n. And obviously you have to use the equation that says B is equal to mu naught, where mu naught is the permittivity of free space times small n times I, which is the current flowing through the solenoid. So we want to kind of like, you know, run a few questions related to these so that we can see how it works for ourselves. So this is the first one that says a flat. So you have to focus on, or you have to look specific, specifically as to what kind of thing are we looking at? Are we looking at a straight wire? Are we looking at a solenoid? Are we looking at a circular coil? So depending on what you're looking at, you will you know, use the appropriate equation to find out the answer in this case. So here we have a flat circular coil, right? That, that has, you know, 50 turns, right? With a diameter of 20 centimeters carrying a current of 0.4 amps. The question goes to tell us that we need to calculate the flux density, which is the same thing as what we call a magnetic flux density, at the center of the coil. So clearly, we need, start, we need to write down what we know. We know, we know mu naught as 4 pi times um, 10 to the minus 5. The question gave us the number of turns, so capital N, number of turns, so that is 50, right? We know the diameter of the coil. So if you know the diameter, it means you must you know the radius. So the radius is going to be half the diameter. So that's going to be 10 centimeters, in other words, in terms of in, in terms of meters, that's going to be 10 to the minus 2, right? Or we could say 0 0.1 meters. For your your um your your radius, good. Then you know the current I, which is zero point four amps. So we have all that information. So we just need to use the equation. That equation that we use for um, a flat coil is given to us as mu naught times capital N times I divided by two R, where R is the radius will give us the value that we need for our magnetic field. So having said all of that, we'll put all of this in the calculator, right? We come down to a point where we get this value to say 0 0.13 times 10 to the minus four. But because physics can, our mathematics tells us that we should write things in standard form, then this is the more refined answer, which is telling us that the magnetic flux density is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4. And the unit for magnetic flux density is Tesla. All right. So that is the answer for this particular question. Then we move on now to look at another scenario where we're talking about the flux density, right, of a, um, of a solenoid in this case. So we want to find that. So first, it says that 
the magnetic flux density um, measured at the center of a 0.48 meter long air core solenoid is 0.0314 Tesla. If the current is 0. 0. Um, 6 amps, calculate the total number of turns in the solenoid. So in this case, we are not trying to find um, what we call, we're not trying to find the B field, right? But we're really trying to find the, um, the number of turns, which is the number of times the wire has looped over for to make that solenoid. So that's what we're really trying to find. So clearly you need to start off with this, question, with this um, information here. We start off with our equation. Now remember that N is the turn density, which is given to us as N divided by L. Number of turns divided by L tells us what small n is. So we need to substitute that in our equation. So if we substitute that n is equal to number of turns divided by L, then we can now manipulate our equation to make n become the subject. By manipulating that equation, n becomes B times L divided by mu naught times I. And then you just go ahead and put in your value. You know B, you know L, which is the length of a solenoid, you know um you know this you know you know you know the the permeability of free space right so working out all of this we come to a point where we get a number that says 0.2 times 10 to the fourth fourth power turn so we if we work that out it's going to be um That's going to be 2,000 turns. So N, N is going to be 2,000 turns. So N is going to be 2,000 turns. So that's the number of times the wire has been looped over on the, to make that solenoid. So you have, you have that amount of turns on the, on the solenoid. All right? So it's like, you know, you have this thing right here. I would just want to count how many times, you know, the, 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 the wire has been looped over number of turns. Yeah. So that, that, that takes care of that question, so to speak. It's just using the equation, of course, and to just let you know that they can ask you to find several things. So once you can remember that N represents, small N represents the number of turns per unit length, then that should give you a clear indication as how you take this, take this to another approach, you know. Now, we will leave it here for now, and then afterwards we will come back to a different lesson speaking about um, force on a current carrying conductor, right? So we'll talk about that in subsequent lessons.